Now, the idea of this is in the quickly before we get uh, the panelists to talk, I want to tell you that you, in order to be really interactive and uh, and uh, useful, we like to you to be uh, all the time engaged in asking questions from the panelists or any other general questions to make remarks on what they say or to comment on what they say. But you have to introduce yourself and your speech shall be only two minutes. And you will be, uh, the bell will sound and I will cut you off <laughs> wherever you are, whether you're in the middle of the speech or the beginning of the speech. But if time is permitted, you may be allowed to answer what the panelists say. Now, the first speaker is uh, past president Miti Chai, and he will speak on who am I in my club. But then who is doing the PowerPoint? This is a rather provocative uh, question purposely to put and we'll see what the speakers come out with. And later we will ask you, what do you think, who you are in your club? You like to go to the roster? Yes. Thank you, um, Dr. Chief. Good afternoon to everyone. I've been given this topic, who am I in my club? And honestly, when I was given it, I really went blank. I had no idea what I was to say. But then I was told that I'm supposed to come up with three points to throw at the audience, to tickle, up, to tickle your minds, open up your thoughts, and after giving the topic some thought, I'm inspired to share uh, three points with you through some quotes. And this is the first quote that I'm showing you. I, uh, taken from Helen Keller. I'm only one, but still I'm one. I cannot do everything, but still I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do something that I can do. With regards to this topic, who am I in my club? The point I wish to make here is, no matter how small, whatever our classification, no matter how insignificant, how quiet one is in one's club, one can still make a contribution. One can still be committed in one's own way. And if all the eyes, I, in a club can do something that they can do, so much can be accomplished. My second slide, please, which is also my second point. Need I say anything else? Every member in a club comes with his or her classification, her vocation, and her unique experience. The quote there is, sometimes the most ordinary things could be made extraordinary simply by doing them with the right people. Everyone can commit to doing ordinary things using their vocation, using what we know best. And it is this that might, and it might just be this that can encourage others to join Rotary. A club like Rotary Club of Kuching Jaya can turn ordinary things into extraordinary success because the people with their individual classification and vocations come together to do their little bit. My third and my last point. It says, don't count the things you do, do the things that count. It might just be one thing that we do, but if that one thing makes a difference to the life of another, then that is what counts. Fellow Rotarians, at times, some members may feel overwhelmed by the abilities and the contributions of other members. Sometimes, we are overwhelmed by the classifications of others. I'd like to just conclude with this statement. If you think you are too small to make a difference, Try sleeping with a mosquito. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Thank you for 
a fantastic reflection. So you see, when you ask unusual questions, you get very creative answer. Thank you. Now the next speaker is uh, uh, President Dave Kwan, who will speak on using our strengths to serve the community. Uh, just thank you. Uh, you want to, is that mic of yours working? Yeah, it's working. Okay, if you can hear me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, using our strengths to serve. Um, it's something which uh, is very common as a Rotarian. When we talk about using our strengths, it's, it's like you have to know your strength, right? But as a professional, even before you are accepted, we are accepted into the club. We already know or demonstrated our strength. So it's not important. It's like what our uh, DJ Gimbox said once: we should be ready to serve. But we must have the right elements to serve. And to me personally, there are three very important elements. And next, the first one. Okay, we should be ready to serve when we join. So the three elements. Uh, next slide. Okay, it's a willingness. You see, a lot of people join Rotary for different purpose. That is my personal experience for my part. Uh, I realized that uh, people enjoy Rotary, some because of uh, our fellowship, and some are really those people who want to serve. I came from a very small club, and when I first joined, uh, it really gave me a different kind of uh, impression. And to me, uh, this is not the thing that I'm looking for. So quietly, under, I did some research, I saw some things, and I realized there are casual Rotarians, and what I consider hardcore Rotarians. <laughs> yeah, hardcore Rotarians. And those are the people who want to change the world. So in, in the end, uh, together with them, we put up something new, we push um, ourselves, and we, we really find out that if we can make someone in the club who, we, who is willing to serve, we can actually achieve a lot more. And then it comes to the next one, is the day to discover. It's what I always tell the people around me. You see, human by nature is we like to stay in our comfort zone. So if, as long as you don't ever venture out from that zone, we will never learn something new, and we will never be able to demonstrate whatever strength that we have with us. You see, in our club, again, I like to use my experience that what I've seen from my club. In my club, uh, we have never done anything great. From uh, other than some fellowship gatherings, uh, some routine blood donation drive. That was the time when I joined. We give some wheelchairs out. Because everyone was so comfortable with what we were having. They enjoyed the meetings, the fellowship gatherings. And none of us are willing to break the routine. So again, with a few hardcore parents, we push the club. We push our president that we want to do something. We want to do something bigger so that everyone is challenged and we are forced to use our strength. Then we embark on, embark on a project which uh, is about fire awareness and prevention campaign for 100 longhouses. And at that time, the size and the budget that is needed for the project is the biggest in the history of the club. And of course, we get words from PPs that some PPs. PPs. <laughs> that we went not going to make it, it's very difficult, and all the all sort of feedback we got in. But I realized that if there's something that we want to achieve so much, so badly, even though we've only a few Rotarians in hand, we give all our, ourselves, and we can pull all the contacts, uh, all the resources that we have, is we manage to get the local fire brigades to train us, we did our own video and things like that. So it's amazing that as long as you dare to step forward, you can always conclude. Okay. 
Then the last one, again, yeah, although we enjoy fellowship, but we must enjoy fellowship in the right way. Yeah. It's not something, uh, fellowship should be able, uh, when having a fellowship gathering, you should be able to inspire each other and motivate each other. It's not something where we come, we drink, we have, we enjoy our time and we forget about it. Okay, so those are the three elements I think that's very important to, to us. Thank you very much.